न्यूज फर्स्ट न्यूज लाइव Hello there very good evening welcome to another edition of Newsline of course the talk of the town is the United States election and yesterday on Newsline too we focused on the US election and foreign policy here in Sri Lanka but today we have a very special guest who can give us uh, the inside out of the foreign policy of Sri Lanka and how Sri Lanka as a country is coping with the geopolitics in this area that has of course intensified uh, with the arrival of the United States uh, India the quad Uh, and also uh, the tensions between the United States and China. We have uh, tonight with us none other than State Minister Tarak Balasuriya, State Minister of Regional Cooperation. Uh, a very good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so, Minister, uh, the first question that I would like to really ask you was: Yesterday, we had a guest, an analyst of geopolitics and uh, foreign affairs. He was of the opinion that Sri Lanka really doesn't have a foreign policy. Now I know uh, for a fact that many people too are also of the opinion that we when it comes to foreign policy are of the stance of winging it going with the flow does sri lanka have a foreign policy yes of course sri lanka has a foreign policy uh, going with the flow also can be a part of the uh, <laughs> part of a policy yeah there's a german term called uh, real uh, politics uh, which is basically not politics based on any ideology but hmm. uh, more based on the ground realities right but uh, sri lanka has always maintained a foreign policy of neutrality and uh, uh, non alignment uh, both governments have uh, continued with that but uh, we also f- uh, i also feel that you know uh, when let's say let's say you know historically a left wing the party comes into po- power they, they had been more close associations with the uh, left left wing block and then mm-hmm. when the uh, uh, united Na- uh, united uh, national party, party comes, comes to power uh, I, i think there's a famous uh, story of uh, Uh, Sir John Kotala was uh, uh, going to uh, uh, Bandan in uh, Indonesia and mm. then um, uh, making a fuss about uh, the non-aligned uh, movement. Right. So the UMP has t- taken a more uh, little bit of a uh, uh, West-oriented, uh, more, uh, uh, what is presumed to be uh, American-friendly uh, uh, foreign policy. Right. Uh, but uh, both uh, the, the gov- whatever the government which have uh, uh, been in power. Hmm. Uh, has followed a non-aligned uh, foreign foreign policy so you're saying that we consistently followed a non-aligned neutral foreign policy we have and you, there has been uh, some deviations uh, but we haven't uh, uh, no government has gone into let's say for example a military agreement with any of the major powers so um uh, at least not in the sense uh, of uh, not not a mil- military cooperation uh, mm-hmm. agreements but what, what i'm uh, talking about in the sense of nato military alliances uh, alliances like quad quad nato exactly so uh, moving on uh, yesterday show also highlighted the lack of a foreign policy document uh, he pointed out that many countries <laughs> have a foreign policy document that uh, is either handed out to foreign dignitaries that makes clear the stance yeah. of us as a country to the world do we have a document on foreign we policy a, uh, we have a, a foreign policy uh, document hmm. uh, which is based on a, a, a 20 policy uh, directive hmm. and uh, which is guided by the the national policy framework yeah, of uh, vistas of, of prosperity and uh, uh, splendor so this foreign policy document hmm. is based on president gotabaya rajpaksa's manifesto it, it's a 20 point uh, it's a 20 point so this is just an inclusion policy. in the president's manifesto It's not an inclusion in the. Uh, it's not an inclusion in the uh, president's manifesto. It's derived from the manifesto. It's derived from the foreign, foreign policy of any country has to reflect its mm. domestic uh, policy. Policy. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so th- that's what we have done with, with this 20-point uh, foreign policy directive. So, but if I question you on Sri Lanka's take on a free and open Indo-Pacific, yeah. what would your response be? Uh, well. BRI and I think the uh, the Indo-Pacific uh, in, in, uh, I, I'm sorry you free say free and open Indo-Pacific well uh, the Pacific is out of our reach so mm. let's if, if it's if it's about uh, you know we are very uh, uh, we want uh, in 1970s in 1971 Sri Lanka mm. was one of the, uh, the signatories for uh, to a, a peaceful Indian Ocean uh, region right and, uh, we uh, still f- uh, follow the uh, the same uh, we take the same stand mm. uh, as in that you know we believe that the Indi- Indian uh, Ocean should be a, uh, a, a area of peace mm. uh, 
uh, and also the economic activities, uh, particularly in the in the uh, Indian Ocean uh, regions, are, mm. are uh, increasing. Um, uh, Thirty percent of uh, all uh, trade uh, takes place uh, in in the Indian Ocean. Mm. Uh, so, it's, uh, particularly seventy percent of uh, trade uh, is mainly the maritime. Uh, maritime uh, it takes through through the ship uh, the sh through ships. Mm. So, uh, in this regard, uh, you know, it, it's very uh, very important that uh, the, uh, the we have uh, the, uh, the the. the uh, the uh, shipping lanes are, are protected and mm. uh, not only the shipping la lanes but things such as you know the underwater uh, cables and uh, or, uh, so uh, we are, and we in order to do that we uh, believe in a policy that you know we should uh, have some uh, multilateral uh, dialogue and mm. uh, follow the uh, uh, follow the international uh, uh, laws of the sea right well since we're discussing a very important topic that uh, which would have uh, that our viewers would have much interest in of course you can send in your questions uh, to the number that will be displayed on your screen uh, but moving on Tarika, there were there were concerns expressed over the visit of u.s secretary of state mike pompeo to sri lanka there were even more concerns expressed when uh, the u.s secretary of state uh, of state traded barbs with china by calling them a predator some question the government's wisdom in allowing these petty squabbles to take place in our island nation what's your response i, I honestly don't want to respond anybody's entitled to their opinion of, mm. uh, of you know uh, another country or another country's uh, foreign policy mm. uh, uh, i think you know uh, as a nation of 22 million people uh, mm. we have uh, enough leaders we have enough uh, officials to understand uh, to evaluate what's best for Sri Lanka mm. uh, so uh, I think it is uh, any, any country uh, uh, has the right to express its views on a, another country country but you know, we we feel this is just part of rhetoric, and you know we don't want to get involved in the uh, the geopolitical uh, uh, the cold war which might be taking place right now. So you do acknowledge that there is maybe a chance that there's a cold war taking place in the region? Well, of course, I mean I, I would be a fool if not to uh, <laughs> admit that. Uh, we are aware of the geopolitical realities, you know, mm. yeah, just because we follow um, neutral. Uh, the neutral, pol uh, mm. neutral policy doesn't mean that we are not aware of it. Mm. Uh, and, we, and also, there's also a misconception that, uh, uh, that uh, certain people have that saying that uh, because we follow a, a neutral policy, it's a policy of inaction. That's not also the case. Uh, we have uh, collaborated with um, uh, many countries uh, in order to, let's say, uh, uh, subdue the, the Somalian uh, uh, the pirate threat. Mm -hmm. We are collaborating with uh, the international community when it comes to uh, narcotics. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I think you know uh, we need to be uh, watchful uh, and uh, mindful uh, that um, uh, that not to mix up the uh, two elements of uh, an unaligned uh, foreign policy mm. and an uh, uh, inactive uh, foreign policy. Mm. However, there are people who question Sri Lanka's action, if or not it reflects uh, the foreign policy that we claim to have, which is neutral. Uh, now, we see practical examples for, uh, for instance, uh, the Hambantota port. Uh, of course, it was not this government, but it was leased off uh, to China. We have massive Chinese development projects in Sri Lanka. We have um, India coming into Sri Lanka and uh, also today yeah. uh, speaking at a webinar on uh, developing uh, bilateral ties between India and Sri Lanka. The Indian High Commissioner uh, also said that uh, if in, uh, in one sentence he had to say how Sri Lanka can um, develop ties between India and Sri Lanka, he'd say that uh, to expedite uh, the East Container Terminal project. Yeah. Uh, the cooperation with India. Of course, uh, there was uh, there was protest against that in Sri Lanka, but uh, some might say that we're trying to hedge yeah. one country against the other. Um, yeah, uh, out of the twenty points, the ninth point is particularly related to uh, what you're saying, uh, what you're uh, talking about. I don't want to uh, talk about the the specific, specific issue. Mm. Uh, the ninth uh, point says that you know uh, we. we uh, uh, sorry, I, I beg your pardon, it's not the ninth point. Uh, uh, 
uh, the, the sixth point of, okay. uh, of the 20 point uh, says that uh, to uphold Sri Lanka's ownership of uh, strategic assets and mm. uh, economically important natural res resources. Mm. Uh, so this is very important. Let's say if we feel that you know the Hambantota Harbour mm. uh, is a very important uh, national, national asset. Mm. Uh, uh, the current government is of the view that you know uh, we should not uh, let's say sell it or we should not uh, lease, lease it out lease it out on a, a long term lease hmm. it doesn't mean that you know we can have a jv so joint ventures with uh, the other countries and other partners we can hmm. certainly in order to if, if we are uh, short of uh, capital then we need to get uh, joint venture uh, partners hmm. uh, but uh, it, 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 so I'm glad that you know in cert, uh, certain um, narratives such as that has been incorporated into uh, our foreign, foreign policy, so that you know we are very clear on uh, on uh, where to go. And uh, uh, another uh, thing is uh, also natural resources. Hmm. It's like you know we are uh, blessed with certain uh, mineral uh, mineral resources, but uh, one part of uh, one part of it is usually the the extraction companies are different from uh, the value addition companies when it comes to natural mm -hmm. resources. Uh, so I think an interesting case case is like you know um, uh, Indonesia recently has uh, uh, has an export ban mm -hmm. uh, ban on uh, nickel. So because mm -hmm. they want to uh, develop this uh, EV uh, batteries uh, okay. for uh, the ele electric cars. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, uh, so they are by they are you know getting a, a value addition company uh, and an extraction company to work together. So I think you know, see, have, having uh, uh, well formulated foreign policy will help us uh, uh, in uh, in ensuring that you know what type of investments that we bring into this country, the investments that has to be beneficial, beneficial to, uh, mm. the, uh, to uh, Sri Lanka and then uh, what kind of uh, assets if you are going to, let's say, uh, 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 are we going to uh, go for JVs uh, mm. with, so I think it's a very important aspect of the newly developed foreign policy directives. Well, we'll now cross over to a short commercial break. When we, when we come back, we will discuss, of course, about uh, the import bans that have uh, been imposed in Sri Lanka and how we as a country are planning to move forward in the new normal. News first. Five COVID-19 deaths reported today. Total death toll in the island rises to 29. Quarantine process to continue despite curfew being lifted. Economic centers limited for wholesale purposes. Over 130 COVID cases reported from Colombo. Central Mail Exchange closed down. Bus fares to be amended amid the COVID-19 outbreak. US election results to be further delayed. Positive response from the Presidential Task Force on hosting LPL.
News First, News Line. Welcome back. You're watching News Line. We're in conversation with the State Minister Tarak Balasuri on. Uh, he's the State Minister of Regional Cooperation. Um, Minister, we spoke about. Uh, foreign policy of Sri Lanka, of course. And before the break, we promised our viewers that we will uh, discuss about the import bans that have been imposed in Sri Lanka. And I'd like to give an opportunity to a question that was uh, forwarded by one of our viewers. Um, this viewer questions you. He says, many medical items are not available because of the import ban. What's the foreign policy on this? I cannot comment on specific as mm. in which items have been uh, banned. Uh, mm. Uh, but, but let's speak in general. Yeah. We we'll say there is a lack of uh, certain essential items because of these import bans. I what are we planning on doing? How, how, you know, I, I don't know how much essential uh, items uh, are banned, but I think you know, certain items have been banned. Hmm. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's a uh, it's a short term measure uh, because we need to uh, manage our balance of payments. Hmm. As you are aware that. Uh, Due to uh, the COVID-19, our uh, the revenue from uh, tourism uh, has dropped to almost uh, nothing, mm. uh, and also there we have had a um, uh, five percent, uh, around five percent decrease in uh, work remittance. Mm. Uh, but uh, more so, you know, the, we have brought down about uh, I, I believe about you know uh, forty-eight thousand uh, workers, and there's another uh, close to 50,000 workers who uh, who have registered to register to come to Sri Lanka mm. so it's not it's not just about the numbers it's also about you know these people are unemployed uh, unemployed and uh, now with the uh, some certain areas uh, being uh, uh, quarantined mm. the, the, the government uh, uh, expenditure in, in this regard goes up so it's a temporary then, uh, but we want to ease it uh, 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 little by little, hmm. uh, and uh, uh, because we. Uh, I know it's hard to give time frames uh, in these unpredictable times, but uh, Minister, how long do you think temporary is? Well, if you can tell me how long the COVID will last, then I'll be able to answer uh, that you know in a, in a better manner. But uh, it all depends on, the, uh, on the COVID uh, pandemic. <laughs> also, we've got another uh, question from one of our viewers. Um, this, of course, on a, on a different point, one that we discussed uh, before the break uh, regarding uh, State Secretary Mike Pompeo's visit to Sri Lanka. This viewer questions, what is the agreement that Pompeo mentioned uh, which is prepared at the U.S. Embassy and is in its final stages? I'm there was sure, no agreement. Uh, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, I, I can't. Remember the, uh, uh, I can't remember the particular reference if uh, uh, the secretary uh, made such a reference. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, if the the viewer is thinking, if he's referring to the MCC, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Mr. Pompeo was very uh, clear. You know, if you feel it's a it's a good uh, uh, deal, you know, sign it. If you are not interested in, don't sign it. You know, I think you know, a lot of uh, media um, uh, has uh, it seems to interpret it that you know there was some arm twisting uh, <laughs> measures or whatever. Nothing of that uh, sort uh, uh, took place. Because we have a lot of uh, collaboration which we uh, which we have with the United States, and mm. we intend to uh, continue with uh, uh, such collaborations. Also, there is another question: Is there any deal agreement to partially or totally hand over the Trincomalee Harbour to the United States, or to involve them in any project surrounding the Trincomalee Harbour? No, I mean <laughs> I, I, these are like the, uh, the the conspiracy theory uh, things which are coming out. Okay. Um, but uh, I can assure you that you know at the uh, uh, discussions at the foreign ministry, you know, no such things were uh, uh, spoken of. Hmm. Um, but uh, so we want to work with uh, all countries uh, when it comes to commerce and uh, economics. Hmm. Uh, so we want to not only the United States, not only China, but we also want to look at other markets. Right. Uh, moving on to uh, more current events, of course, as we mentioned uh, at the beginning of the program, the talk of the town is the United States election. Now, many are unsure as to what will happen. But of course, currently, uh, Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden is leading the race. Uh, we have a question, another one from our viewers. Of course, uh, this will be accommodated with a question that I was anyway going to pose to you. Uh, State Minister, do we really expect a drastic change in U.S. policy if the states vote in favor of the Democrats? Um, 
No, uh, I mean, the short answer to your question is no, I, I don't think there will be a drastic uh, uh, change in the US uh, foreign policy. It has been very steady. Uh, we uh, see different, different, you know, the doctrines such as like, you know, the Obama doctrine, then we heard of the Trumpism, uh, uh, Trumpism uh, and prior to that, uh, the, the Reagan doctrine and mm. then, uh, then the Carter doctrine. Uh, and but I think you know it's a different interpretation of uh, the, uh, the same the, thing. Uh, the same thing. Uh, the, the, I mean the, the, the way I see it. Hmm. Uh, uh, and um, uh, so I don't think there will be uh, uh, any uh, drastic changes in uh, the U.S. Uh, foreign policy towards us. Uh, but judging by the events of the history, uh, we know that um, Samantha Power, a yes. high-ranking official during the Obama administration, uh, was highly instrumental in bringing resolutions against us at the United Nations. Now. Uh, this particular individual would probably secure a high post under a Biden administration. Are we prepared to face the international pressure? Uh, I think Samantha Powers is more of an activist, and uh, but uh, I don't think she'll be the uh, the uh, uh, Secretary of State. But I don't know who. I, I don't know that you know. Yes. Hmm rumors saying that uh, there's talk saying that uh, Susan Rice might be the Secretary mm. of State because uh, Joe Biden is looking at a very diverse uh, cabinet. cabinet. Mm. Uh, certain senators ha have been mentioned as uh, uh, possible uh, Secretaries of State. Uh, I, I, I think the, if uh, the Senate uh, or Vice President Biden gets elected, mm. you know, you, you need to look at his history. He has been one of the youngest senators in the United States. Mm. He, has, he was in the Senate for uh, about 36, 30, 30 odd year, mm. years in the Senate and then he was uh, Vice President for uh, uh, eight years. So he, mm. he, he knows how the, the institutions work. Uh, so I don't think he will be more of an activist, uh, but he'll be more of an uh, institutionalist. Um, and uh, uh, but uh, and I think you know if you if you look at you know the the uh, the Trump's uh, the foreign policy mm -hmm. and how it differed from the Obama uh, uh, foreign policy, uh, whereas uh, President Trump uh, was more of a uh, uh, isol isolationist uh, approach uh, and more of a nationalist, uh, nationalist, and also he moved away from let's say let's say the UNESCO. But actually, I think President Obama had uh, you know had written prior to that also, mm. uh, and then you know with the, they pulled out of WHO, they uh, uh, the UNHRC, uh, the Paris the Climate Accord, and they, so so. Uh, they took um, that stand, mm. but, but whereas I think you know the, uh, the Obama administration, uh, uh, they wanted to, uh, they provided more leadership to the uh, world, uh, world uh, mm. uh, uh, because they were active in the uh, UN human rights, uh, active in uh, many other spheres. Uh, so uh, uh, perhaps with uh, with, uh, with an experienced mm. politician like. Uh, uh, Vice President Biden, if he's elected, uh, I think he, you know he will. He will certainly. He's known to be a good negotiator, uh, uh, even right. when he was in the uh, Senate. So uh, I think you know he will bring a lot of multilateralism uh, and, into the, uh, and into also the bilateralism. State Minister, we've got just one minute left. Yes. Uh, with the, I know it's hard to answer this question, but I expect a short answer from you. Uh, with the increasing geopolitical influence in the region. Is the foreign ministry really preparing to face this head-on? Yeah, I mean, uh, we have a very clear idea of what we want to do, uh, and um, I think uh, I think we we want to be the let's say you know follow a similar uh, similar foreign policy to what Switzerland uh, followed, hmm. um, and but they did uh, engage economically with uh, other uh, countries, uh, countries. Hmm. and uh, Swiss, Switzerland became important of because of uh, its uh, passes, hmm. uh, and similarly I think you know the hmm. uh, Sri Lanka will become important because of its location. Hmm. Um, uh, so uh, we we feel that you know, and we feel that you know these certain like the Indo-Pacific. Uh, strategy mm. and the uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the initiatives, mm. they need not be mutually uh, exclusive, exclusive. Uh, because uh, they are after all strategies uh, about connectivity right. and economic development.
Thank you very much, uh, State Minister Tarak Balasuri, for joining us on our program and clarifying those issues. Of course, um, when it comes to foreign policy and um, the geopolitics in the region, it's uh, not foreign policy, but the geopolitics in the region is highly volatile, and only time can tell as to if we really have achieved our objectives. And of course, we would love to have you once again on our show uh, to discuss these matters more in length. Thank you very much, State thank Minister, you, for, for coming on our show. And thank you very much, of course, to all our viewers out there for sending in your questions and for tuning in, as you always do to Newsline. Until we meet again, take care and God bless. Five COVID-19 deaths reported today. Total death toll in the island rises to 29. Quarantine process to continue despite curfew being lifted. Economic centers limited for wholesale purposes. Over 130 COVID cases reported from Colombo. Central Mail Exchange closed down. Bus fares to be amended amid the COVID-19 outbreak. US election results to be further delayed. Positive response from the Presidential Task Force on hosting LPL. Hello there, very good evening and welcome to Thursday's edition of Prime Time News. You're with me, Joel Aotkun. We start off today with a look at our top story. President Gotabe Rajapaksa has advised the officials attached to the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 prevention to ensure that the quarantine process is strictly adhered to even when quarantine curfew is being relaxed. We should clearly mention that the removal of curfew will not result in the removal of quarantine processes. It should remain. Right now, due to curfew, everyone is restricted from travelling. We should ensure that those undergoing home quarantine continue to do so even after curfew is relaxed. We need to identify those houses. We need to ensure that over the next few days. The Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 Prevention convenes daily under the patronage of the President. Addressing the meeting today, the President noted that special attention should be paid towards tracing close contacts of COVID-19 patients if they are discovered from society, adding that areas where the patients are discovered from should also be closely analysed. He also noted that those areas should be declared as isolated areas if the need arises. It has also been decided at today's meeting to restrict activities at the dedicated economic centers to only wholesale trade. The president has also instructed that trade should be conducted following strict health guidelines with PCR tests being conducted continuously. It was also instructed to conduct random and continuous PCR tests at the dedicated economic centers under the supervision of the Ministry of Health and the Sri Lanka Navy with the support of private hospitals.
Sports Minister Nama Rajapaksa says that the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 Prevention has issued a favourable response with regards to the commencement of the Lanka Premier League cricket tournament without any further delay. Posting a tweet on his official Twitter handle, Sports Minister Namal Rajapaksa said that Sri Lanka cricket had received a positive response from the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 Prevention to host the LPL tournament. The minister had expressed his gratitude towards President Gotabe Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa for taking action in this regard. He further added in his tweet that this reflects the government's efforts to adapt to the new normal and restore normalcy in the country. When News First inquired whether the tournament is organized adhering to the 7 and 14 days quarantine procedure, the Lanka Premier League tournament director Ravin Vikramaratna said that the tournament is being planned under a 7 and 14 day quarantine procedure. He further added that he hopes the tournament will commence on the 27th of this month. The Lanka Premier League cricket tournament will begin with the participation of five teams consisting of local and foreign players. Now the mechanism of distributing essential goods in the areas where quarantine curfew is in effect continues to be streamlined each day. The PETA wholesale stores remained open today. Though lorries were not allowed to go near stores yesterday, a limited number of lorries were allowed today. Meanwhile, people who transport goods in the PETA wholesale market face several hardships. This is due to the restrictions imposed on the carts used by them for the transportation of goods. Meanwhile, the people also complained that the tyres of their carts had been deflated. Uh, uh, police deflated the tyres this morning. The police told us not to use the carts. How are we to survive without doing our job? We are daily wage earners. Now we have to carry these sacks by ourselves. Sri Lanka is a democratic country. The meaning of a democratic nation means you can't violate our rights. They have deflated all the tires without a reason. Then they should close the shops as well. Then we can stay at home. We still didn't receive the 5,000 rupee allowance. They promised to give a 5,000 rupee hamper, but we did not get any of that. To this day, we have not received any relief. We do not need to contact COVID-19 either. We too would love to stay at home. If we have food, implement a better plan that would suit the country's needs. After it was reported in the news yesterday, everyone's attention, including the president's attention, was drawn to continue the quarantine procedure without going to a lockdown. This reflects the government's intentions to adapt to the new normal and restore normalcy in the country. But even under such circumstances, if the police have defended the cars of the good carriers in the PETA market, I think it was unnecessary. This should not have been done by a police officer. Taking a vehicle under police custody is different, but the police cannot do any harm to a vehicle. Under the law, we cannot accept such an act. It is an infringement made by police on privacy. <laughs> News First made an inquiry about this from the police media spokesperson DIG Aditrohana. He said the incident is under investigation. Although the Tambuttegama Special Economic Centre was open today, the numbers of farmers who arrived at the location were low. About 30,000 kilograms of vegetables that were expired during the last few days were seen dumped there today. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Katugas Sota Manik Kumuram Special Economic Center also had a low turn up of traders and customers during the day. People residing in Borulas Gamua and Bokundura gathered at the respective Grama Nidadari offices since this morning with the hope of obtaining the 5000 rupee allowance. The crowds later complained, however, that although they were notified last night to arrive at the Grama Nidadari offices today, they were not presented with the 5000 rupee allowance. A tense situation arose following the arrival of the Grama Niladari. <laughs> Why have you gathered here? They say the divisional secretary has announced it. No such announcements have been made. It was announced by the municipal council according to my knowledge. We cannot help you out. The municipal council has notified. Not even the divisional secretary was informed. I spoke to him. There is no need to move about, especially with COVID-19 spreading. Even the government will face certain difficulties. So will we.
a meeting was organized at the Kasbaba Municipal Council Hall today to discuss the situation. The meeting was headed by Minister.